special day like this that he has found you worthy of being in his presence. Let's say thank you to him. Let us acknowledge him. Let us acknowledge his mercies. More than anything else, let us bless the name of the Lord. Let us worship him. Father, we bless the holy name of the Lord. We thank you, Jesus Christ. You are the Alpha and the Omega. We owe everything to you. It is by your message that we are not consumed. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, in the name we have worship. Please join me in singing this song of worship. Fast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. of the Lord. Is there anybody that has anything that he can hold to God that if it were not by his mercies, that this or that would not have happened or that I would not have been this or that. You are the one to just say thank you to the Lord God Almighty if you have been a, a beneficiary of the mercies of the Almighty God. Because it is not everybody that actually gets that mercy. There are some who don't get it. Amen. And that's why this song in Yoruba connects with me a lot.
to God. Some people are looking at me and they are laughing at me because of my voice. I thank God that I even have a voice to say. Hallelujah. And it is by the mercies of Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. And that's why whatever you have, in whatever situation you have, you must always remember that the mercies of God is actually what brought you this far. Can you just take another one minute just to say thank you to the Almighty God for His mercies over you? In the last week, in the last month, all through this month of August, point to one thing particularly for which the Lord has been merciful to you. Father, we give you praise, O Lord. We bless your holy name, O Lord. We are thankful, Lord. We give you glory. We exalt you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Let me just share something little with you. It's little, but I'm just talking about the mercies of God. Just about a week ago, or maybe one and a half weeks ago, just about a week ago, where I'm coming from, as you all know, I come from one exotic location in this planet called Mogadishu in Somalia. Just about a week ago, on a Saturday evening, Al, I mean, Al Shabaab, for those of us who know Al Shabaab, they went to attack an hotel. They went, there was a suicide bomber who came to the gates. So when they detonated the bomb, so everybody scattered. Then they had some people waiting who came in with guns and they were shooting. There is a back entrance in the hotel. People were now rushing to go through the back entrance. They had stationed a vehicle there loaded with bombs. Again, that was detonated. So they killed, I mean, about 30, 40 people got killed in that place. It's in a particular region of the town, which we don't get to go to. But just two days before, I led my team to that area. And then we went to see some places. And then while we were there, some forces of the national government came and said, what are you people doing here? This place is very dangerous. We don't want you guys coming here. So to think that I was there two days before, and then there was this headline hugging unpleasant event that happened just two days after you will know that it is just by the mercies of God because you don't even know when they can strike then the next morning that was in the evening the next morning we have the UN compound where everybody is which is well fortified they shot mortars round across to the UN cover it eventually landed in the sea it didn't come it didn't come near us and I'm always ever so confident that there is no harm that will come to me. But looking back, I understand that it is just the message of God. Even when you have that confidence, it is, it is the, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So the strength to even be able to go through, and many people get crazy along the line. They can't bear it. They will have to leave and all of, and all of that. So people ask me, how long, where long are you going? When are you going to go for your rest? And the question is, I'm resting here. Say, as a matter of fact, what is a big deal? The fact that you can even have the presence of mind, that your mental faculty is working, even in those circumstances that you can do what you need to do with excellence without any fear. Well, it's just by the mercies of God. It's not everybody that can go through it. So personally, I have reasons to thank God for his mercies. Is there anybody that has any reason to thank God for his mercies? Especially for desire of nations in the last eight years? Please join me in just saying hallelujah to the almighty God. Join me in shouting hallelujah to the almighty God. The mercy of the Lord is the game changer. And I want us to, I just want to pray for you. That even as you go on in this, as we are going into a new month, you will experience the mercies of God in the name of Jesus. That amen is actually not correct. I pray for you that you will experience the mercies of God in the month of September in the name of Jesus. From this time forth to the end of the year and beyond, the mercies of God will begin to speak for you. When you go out, the mercies of God will speak for you. When you come in, the mercy of God will be in action for you. 
in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we want to say thank you. Father, we bless your holy name, O oh Lord. Father, we give you glory, Lord. We exalt you because you have been very, very kind to us, O oh Lord. Father, you are the one that is our Alpha. You are the one that is our Omega. You are the one that has brought us this far. Father, we ascribe all the glory unto you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for your love and your care. We thank you because you have counted us special to be unto you. You are the one who called us. You are, we are not the ones that are able to come unto you. Father, there is none like unto you. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. The best of men, even in their best, they are still men. There are some who want to help us, who have the capability, but they are, they are not able to help. As human beings, there are some who want to help, but they don't have the capacity. You are the only one that every human being can rest upon. You are the only one that we rest upon. Father, we acknowledge your omnipotence in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we acknowledge your omnipresence in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we acknowledge your omniscience in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You said you have not asked the sons of Jacob to seek you in vain. Therefore, our coming here today will not be in vain in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our coming here today to worship you will carry profit in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Beyond what we will speak with our mouth, Father, I pray that you put something new in the lives of everybody today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that you will impact upon everyone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray nobody will go back home the same in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, let the words of our mouth, let the meditation of our heart, let it be acceptable in your presence in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, based on what Jesus did and on what you approved, Father, we pray that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the devil be put to shame, O Lord. Let the enemy be terrified. Let your name be glorified. And let your people be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So shall it be. And to a loud amen, we want to say thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. So shall it be, for we are prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, as our Father in the Lord, we say, please go around and meet one or two or three people and say, I'm going to be blessed today. My blessing will be more than yours. After I've been blessed, then God will be able to attend to you. Say that pray that the Lord God Almighty will bless me quickly. So after me, so that you can be answered. God bless you. I'm going to be blessed today. Then you will also be blessed. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Brothers, good morning. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. I pray for each and every one of us that the Lord will answer you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not hearing you. I'm praying that the Lord will touch you today in the name of Jesus Christ. The power that divided the Red Sea will work on your behalf in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The power that turned water into wine will work for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The power that brought down Goliath will be in action for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will know God in a new way today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even the power that brought Lazarus out of the grave will work for you such that every good thing that is dead in your life will come back to life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me hear a louder amen. Let me hear a louder amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I've been told that I have a very short time today, so I'm going to be very, very short and fast. Praise the Lord. Some people don't even believe. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I just want to share with us briefly, against the background of the fact that uh, we have come this far in the desire of nations, when you look back, you realize that what is it that has made us thrive? 
through thick and thin. There are so many stories that we can, that we can tell. There are so many twists and turns. There are so many people that the Lord has brought away. And you are wondering, why did this person come here? There are so many things that have come, that we have seen, that have just come, that has just showed up. And you are wondering, how did it come? I've put everything under the banner, under the title of the mercy of God. The Lord has been very, very merciful unto us. Honestly, I can tell you, you can always relate to it that it is by the mercies of God. But, of course, we always think that uh, everything that has to do with mercy is about uh, maybe forgiveness of sins. How many of us have another, is there somebody here that has another definition of what mercy is all about? Yes, please, let me have, let me have a contribution. Is there anybody that, has, that wants to tell me, what, do you, what does mercy mean to you when you talk about the mercies of God? What does it do? No, before I come to the PhD holders, let's ask... Yes. Mercy makes room for us. Okay, yes, that's one. Yes, any other? Sorry? It's compassion. Yes, that's another, that's another way of looking at mercy. Yes. Any others? Okay, Pastor, what are they tell us? I think for me, mercy means getting what I don't deserve. Praise the Lord. You failed, but somebody says you actually failed, but just join them, you passed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyhow, praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. So, I said that mercy is in two ways. If we are going to summarize it. First, not getting the punishment that you deserve. It's by mercy. That, oh, you deserve to be punished in this way because of what you have done. Because we are all human beings, and there is nobody that is totally perfect. So, for some of the things that we do, we deserve punishment. But once mercy steps in, mercy eradicates every fault. Mercy counsels every ordinance, everything that has been written against us. And that's why I'm going to pray for you once more to the one that will shout a louder amen that by the mercies of the Lord God today, by the mercies of the Almighty God, everything that has been written against your name in the negative, they will be canceled in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. The second part of mercy is getting what you don't deserve. It's a function of mercy. I've mentioned to us here before, there is a case of Saul. And I'm just going to mention that very, very briefly in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 15. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 15. God was speaking about Saul. Don't forget, um, King Saul was somebody that was picked up by God. When they, I mean, he was anointed. He was the most handsome man in the kingdom. He had everything. In fact, he was only going to look for sheep. But God met with him, the prophet met with him, anointed him. And he was actually told that, don't worry, as soon as I anoint you, when you live here, when you go, you will see a group of men. They will be prophesying. Join them and prophesy. Then at some point, it was even told him that, don't worry, God is with you. Just do as occasion serves you. That was the message to him that, don't worry, just whatever you think is right. He said, but my favor will not be taken from him as I took it from Saul. I'm going to come to this. So I'm just giving you the background of King Saul. He was favored by God. He was anointed by God. He began to prophesy. Somebody that did not even know anything about prophecy before. He saw a group, he saw a company of prophets, joined them, and he kicked them. And that's why I'm going to advise you. Sometimes many of us, they ask us today, um, do you speak in tongues? Many of us don't. Don't worry. I want to ask, I want to encourage you. Whenever we get to a place and we are speaking in tongues, just be repeating what I'm saying. If you can't even do anything, it will kick in. So King Saul left. Then God gave him a set of people whom God said that, don't worry, the people that the Lord has taught their heart, God gave them to him to work with him. So, so King Saul came out, started off very, very well. But see, one or two things happened. 
And I pray concerning every one of us, everybody under the sound of my voice, you will not make a mistake by which God will change his mind concerning you in the name of Jesus. Some people believe that they, don't, they can't make mistakes. That's why they did not answer amen. That's why their amen was not loud. I'm praying for you once more. That thing that you will do for which God will turn his back against you, you will not do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A couple of things happened. He made his mistakes. Then God said this. God actually at this point was speaking about David. David was a shepherd then. He had not even come into the scene. But God was speaking about David. He said that, but my favor will not be taken from him. As I took it from Saul. Please, let's use KJB. So I, there is a particular way in which KJB described it that I want us to see. He said, but my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. So Saul had the mercy of God. He was operating by the mercies of God. He was conquering by the mercies of God. He was doing everything by the mercies of God. He was, a, he was an answer man by the mercies of God. Out of the blues, he became a king by the mercies of God. Then at some point, God just said, I changed my mind concerning this man. And he withdrew his mercy from him. From that point, Saul began to make more mistakes. Saul started off prophesying along with prophets. He saw a group of prophets when he just came out and began to prophesy along with them. But after this, there was a time he needed to find out some information in order to do something. Somebody that started out in life prophesying. He had to go to speak to the dead in order to get guidance on what to do. It's like you, it's like somebody, sorry, not you, somebody being in church on Sunday. After that, I have to go to one Babalao somewhere and then to go and be asking for guidance. What should I do? You can see that it is a, how do they call it in English? So oxymoron. The two should not exist on the same line. That you, you are a church boy, or you've come to church today, then in the evening, they see you in some place where you enter with your back. And then they say, oh, the next you must carry one leg at a time. One, maybe it's a small boy, you'll be calling the person Baba. The person will be for you as Baba. When they say that, when you can't even call your pastor Baba, and it's the person that will say, you know what, don't go out tomorrow, because tomorrow the sky is not clear. That was how Saul ended. Why? God withdrew his mercy from him. I pray that the mercy of God will work for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please note, King Saul was still king. God did not withdraw his crown from him. He did not withdraw his health from him. He did not take anything from his head. He said, I withdrew. God deliberately withdrew his mercy from Saul. And from that point, he that was winning wars before, who was in charge, who was doing everything, everything was all right until the situation whereby mercy was withdrawn. And from that point, he became vulnerable. I pray for you, and I hope you are listening, and I hope you are receiving these prayers with every faith. I pray for you, you will not become vulnerable in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But that is not even where I'm going to. I just want us to understand first that it's our anniversary as a church. And I want us to understand it is the mercy of God that has brought us this far. Because mercy qualifies you for what you are not qualified for. Mercy grants you favor. Mercy grants you access. Mercy grants you what you never thought, where you never thought you could reach. Mercy will give you an escape route, even in the midst of the worst of circumstances. I pray that the mercy of God will work for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So mercy is not just an issue of forgiveness. Mercy 
it's an all-encompassing term that you actually, that every Christian should want in his life. First, don't forget, with mercy, what you are supposed to be, fun, what you are supposed to be punished for, God will forgive you. What you don't deserve, God will give it unto you. But I'm even telling us that let us understand that if mercy is withdrawn, there are consequences. You will not face the consequences of mercy being withdrawn in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I want us to I don't want us to understand something about another dimension about the mercy of God. That's what and so it's it's going to be very, very short and sharp. Psalm 136. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> when I say it's going to be short and sharp, somebody said amen. Amen indeed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 136. Um, technical guys, can you help us? I want everybody to stand up. Let us read this responsorially. Are we ready? Yeah. Psalm 136. I'll start with the first one. You will read the next one. I'll read the one after. You will read the next one. And then we'll read the last verse together. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, Psalm 136. You know, I grew up listening to this psalm. And it actually connects with me a lot. I know it often in Yoruba. But I don't know it in English. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So please, let's start. I read the first verse, you read the second one. All give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. For his mercy endure it forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of Lords. For his mercy endure it forever. Verse 5. To him that by wisdom May the heavens, for his mercy, endure it forever. To him that made great light, for his mercy, endure it forever. The moon and the stars to rule by night. For his mercy endure it forever. And brought out Israel from among them. For his mercy endure it forever. To him we divided the Red Sea unto, into parts. For his mercy endure it forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea. For his mercy endure it forever. To him which smote great kings. For his mercy endure it forever. Sion, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endure it forever. And gave their land for an heritage, for his mercy endure it forever. Who remembered us in our low estate for his mercy endure it forever? Who give it food to all flesh for his mercy endure it forever? Let us now take verse 26 together. Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven for his mercy endure it forever. Amen. Please let us have our seats. Amen. Now, I just want to make one point before we go. 
for us to understand. I've talked about several dimensions of mercy, but there is this particular one that I want us to understand. As a matter of fact, that, um, Psalm 136, that talks about this, we started about praising God, but it got to a point wherever he began to talk about what God does in warfare. Signposting it with mercy. Before, I used to be head usher in Abuja. So I, I, we have a group we used to praise. You know, one of the songs that I love so much, but which I could not decipher. I could not bring the two together. I could not understand what it's saying. It, it says like, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jehovah, the man of war, his mercies endure forever and ever. Oh, praise his holy name. So the two things, so when we want to pray, I sing this song, so I'm, when I want to lead songs, or when I want to lead prayers, I will sing a song that will link to the prayer. So I want to sing a song about mercy, for example, and my understanding of what mercy means that time was just forgiveness of sins. Whenever we want to pray, the first thing you want to do, you give thanks to God, you ask for forgiveness of sins, then you begin to ask for what you need. So that, that was my understanding. But I found it difficult to link the two together to say, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jehovah, the man of war. And then you are talking about mercy. I couldn't join the two. I could not bring the two. I didn't understand. So, is it when we want to do warfare prayers that we'll sing this song? But it has mercy there. Or is it when we want to sing about mercy that we'll sing this song? But it has warfare there. Jehovah, the man of war. Then you talk about mercy. My message to you today is very simple. There is a warfare dimension of the mercy of God. Yes, there is a favor dimension of the mercy of God. There is a forgiveness dimension of the mercy of God. But there is a warfare dimension of the mercy of God. That when you get to a phase whereby you want God to go ahead of you. In warfare. You call on his mercy. Psalm 135. Let me read a part of Psalm 135 to you. Psalm 135, just like Psalm 136, also started by singing praises of the Almighty God. Psalm 135. Psalm 135. That's the psalm before the one that we have just read. And it starts by saying, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. And it continues to talk about the goodness of God. But when you get to verse 8, so you will see it is the same psalm. When you go to verse 8, he was praising God and he was saying, Who smote the firstborn of Egypt? Both of man and beast. Verse 9. We'll read it to verse 12. He said, Who sent tokens and wonders to the midst of thee, O Egypt, upon Pharaoh and upon all his servants? Verse 10. Who smote, they are talking about God, that he also smote great nations and slew mighty kings. Verse 11. They mention specifically. And I remember this very well in my growing up when we read this psalm every day. Sion of Amori, Og of Abashan, <laughs> and all the kings of kingdoms of Canaan. They were very specific that God was doing this. So when you now look at that, that was what Psalm 135 said. He just talked about God that is able to do this. But then when we now got to Psalm 136, it was in Psalm 136 that you begin to see, when you look at from verse 17, that he began to talk about it, that we did this because the mercies of God endured forever. And I pray concerning you, that because the mercies of God endured forever, everyone that comes against you, they will see the Jehovah, the man of war in action in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So verse 17 says, that's Psalm 36, Psalm 136. Psalm 135, I talked about what God did. How did he do it? Psalm 136 now talked about it. He said, to him which smote great kings for his mercy endure it forever. When you invoke the mercy of God, it's not just for forgiveness of sins. It is also that he shall fight your battle. 
I pray for you today that the Lord God Almighty will fight your battle in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I can tell you, either you like it or not, you might not want to agree with me because some of us are very peaceful in nature. Some of us are militant in nature. No matter what, if you are a child of God, there is fight to be fought. Even if you are not a child of God, there is war to be fought. That is why they say that, ah, behold, I have opened a door before you, an effectual door. They say, but there are adversaries. So even if you don't want to fight, there are people that are coming to fight. And that's why you need the mercies of God to slay every king of Bashan in your life. To slay every hawk in your life. And the Lord God Almighty will prevail against them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to conquer territories. As a child of God, you need to be able to move and conquer territories. People will come against you, but you have to be in a situation whereby when you invoke the mercy of God, God will go into action. In order for you to move forward, in order for you to get to the promised land, there is a battle to be fought. God promises people, he says, oh, you are going to move from Egypt, you are going to go to the promised land. On the way to the promised land, they saw plenty. There was a lot of war on the way. In fact, they were the ones that were going out and was meeting, and they were meeting people and killing them. But at some point, there was a set of people called the Amorites. The Amorites came to attack them, the children of God. Even though, you see, the devil is very, very audacious. When you know that these people are the people of God, Everywhere they've been going to, they've been winning. These people say, okay, we are going to meet them. For you to know, so either you like it or not, when you're a child of God, there's war that you have to fight. That's why the Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. In the school of disciples, what they, what, what they teach us all the time is the weapons of our warfare. Um, everything is warfare. Now, the weapon of what the enemy, what the enemy is using, everything is warfare. But they tell us that you have been called to fight a war, but there is victory. The war has already been won, but you are a soldier for Christ that needs to fight. So I want us all of us to understand that this weapon that I'm putting in your hands today, it will win for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It will bring down every adversary in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It will put to rout everyone that comes against you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In your office, in the family, among friends, or wherever. Anybody that rises up against you as an adversary, they will fall for your sake in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to end with this. Just for us to know. I want to add another addition for it so that you understand and you believe it, because some of us might still not be very, very clear about this matter. The mercies of God. How many of us have heard of the story in Second Chronicles chapter 20? They were talking about Jehoshaphat. How many of us remember? Okay. How many of us have ever heard of the story? Not talk of remember. Okay. In Second Chronicles chapter, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 21. They were fighting. This was fight. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 21. See what happened. No, let's even start from 20. Let's start from verse 20. This looks like Hog, king of Bashan. We're going to deal with them today. Praise the Lord. Is this verse 20? Where do we start from? Huh? Second Chronicles chapter 20, 20. You can't really forget it. Second Chronicles chapter 20, 20. Please remember this and put it in your back pocket. You must remember it everywhere you go. That God is for you. Second Chronicles chapter 20, 20. So anyway, please listen. We're going to read it to 21. Say, morning, and then they went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judea, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall he prosper. Verse 21 now. 
verse 21. Now listen, this Jehoshaphat was a warrior. He was the one leading the battle against the enemies. See what he did. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. And that should praise the beauty of holiness. And that's what we are going to do today. And as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord. Let somebody join me with this last phrase. For what? For his mercy endure it forever. And that was how the world was won. Simple as ABC. They were singing and then they said, let us praise the Lord. How? Why? For his mercy endure it forever. His mercy will endure for you today in the name of Jesus Christ. We have come this far by the mercies of God. We have come this far by the favor of God. As we go on, I just want to sound a note of warning to everything that can be an adversary, to the Zion of Nations, New York, and to everybody that is joined, with us, joined to us in one way or the other. Every adversary that comes our way, they will fall for us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They will... What the Bible says specifically is that they shall come to they are come against you in one way, but they will fall seven ways. Everyone that comes against you, they will have seven multiple lines of defeat in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for you that you will win all your battles in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not even lose anyone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord God Almighty will go ahead of you in the name of Jesus. The Lord Almighty, God Almighty will win for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The ones that come to you, you will defeat them in the name of Jesus Christ. The ones that you come to, you will defeat them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will make a way for you in the name of Jesus. Financially, you will be a victor. I didn't hear you, amen. Materially, you will be a victor. Spiritually, you will be a victor. The Bible said that you are more than conquerors. Your name will appear in that address in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be a winner in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. David was just doing his own thing, and then they came to call him, and he came against Goliath. As surely as the Lord lived, God made sure that David won Goliath. I pray for you, every Goliath that comes against you, they will fall down for your sake in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. David won Goliath. You too, you will win in the name of Jesus Christ. Our God is a consuming fire. I pray concerning every one of you. The Lord will consume everything that comes before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything waiting for you to fail, they will fail in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone waiting for you to fail, they will be the ones to fail in the name of Jesus Christ. Every trap that the enemy has set for you, they will be the ones to fall to it in the name of Jesus there are several plans that might be ahead of you. As you are planning, the enemy is also planning. That's why you will see. Because from the area where I come from, I tell you something. Somebody can just be going like this. Some people have planted minds on that way. And he does not know. Every, he will just enter into it, and then the mind will blow up. And then there is death and destruction. That's also the way the enemy operates. But I pray for you. Every mind that has been set on your way, in the course of this year, it is the enemy that will blow it up in the name of Jesus Christ. Every pit that has been dug in wait for you, I pray for you that you will not fall into it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will escape and you will be free in the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 91 says that he that dwell in the secrets of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. The Lord God will be your refuge in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now let us rise up, let us rise up. And I want you to say a word of two, a word or two in thanks to the Almighty God for his mercies over your life. It is by his mercies that you have come this far to the end of August in year 2022. It is by the Lord's mercy. And that mercy will not leave you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now I want you to just pray, just lift up your hands and say, Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your mercy. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your mercies that has brought me this far. And Father, I invoke your mercy again. As I come against, as I go against every enemy, as I go against every adversary, as I go against the fight of life, as I begin to fight the fight of life, I, I invoke your mercy because your mercy endureth forever. I will endure in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because your mercy endureth forever, 
I will be a winner in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because your mercy endureth forever, I'm, champ, I'm a champion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because your mercy endureth forever, I will be above only. I will not be beneath in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Begin to say to the Almighty God, because your mercy endureth forever, I'm a champion, I'm on top, I will never be below. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm a winner, I'm more than conqueror. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, myself and all the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders. Why? Because the mercies of the Lord endure it forever. The mercy of the Lord endure it forever. The mercy will work for me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift up your hands and just say to Almighty God, be deliberate about it. I want you to pray. Pray clearly. Open your mouth and just tell the Lord Almighty God, because your mercy endure it forever. I'm a champion. I'm a winner in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the message of the Lord endure it forever, it will consume every problem that comes my way. Every difficulty that comes my way will be consumed by the Almighty God. Why? Because the mercy of God endure it forever. The mercy of God will work for me. The mercy of God will work my way. The mercy of God will work things out for me. The mercy of God will guide me in the way to go so that I don't fall into the trap of the enemy. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every enemy standing somewhere waiting for me, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they will fall in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The mercy of the Lord will take over. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the mercy of the Lord endure it forever. It will endure for my sake in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It will endure for my sake in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray concerning you, the Lord will fight for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Even though I'm preaching better than you are responding. But don't worry, I forgive you. I said in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I want you to lift up your eyes to God and just close your eyes. It's not, I don't want to make altar call, but I want you to concentrate on the Almighty God. I want you to clear your throat and say loud amen as we are going to pray these prayers. I want you to lift up your hands in surrender to the Almighty God and we are going to pray. And I pray for you that the Lord will fight for you in the name of Jesus. Against everyone that is smiling with you, but indeed they are not with you, the Lord will fight for you in the name of Jesus. Because the mercy of the Lord endureth forever, and because it is available for you, everyone pretended to be your friend, but indeed they are enemies. Against them, the Lord God Almighty will fight for you. Against those that you have done good, but they are using me to, to repay you with evil. Ah, I pray, because the mercies of the Lord God Almighty endures forever. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord will fight for you. Every battle raging in your life, against every battle raging in your life, because the mercy of the Lord God Almighty exists, endure it forever. The Lord will fight for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Against every plan that has been programmed in store for you, because the mercy of God endure it forever, the Lord will fight for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Every plan program against you, they will not work in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the mercy of the Lord God Almighty endures forever. Every plan that has been programmed, everything that the enemy is doing, just like the Almighty God went and killed the firstborn of Egypt, the Lord will fight for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the mercy of God endures forever. Against every red sea you come against. I pray that the Lord will fight for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Against those who have abandoned you, supposedly maybe you are not doing well or anything like that. They will come back to see you because the Lord will fight for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will do well in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Violence shall no longer be had anywhere around you in the name of Jesus Christ. No violence in your land in the name of Jesus. No violence in your career in the name of Jesus. No violence in your family in the name of Jesus. No violence in your going out and your coming in the name of Jesus. No violence around anyone that pertains to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No violence in your body in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I baptize in the blood of Jesus Christ. 
no violence around you in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything fighting you in your body, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, because, you, because the mercy of the Lord endures forever. You will, be, you will be victorious over them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will win that battle in the name of Jesus Christ. That battle that I have not been able to mention, but which you know about. Because the mercy of the Lord God endures forever. You will be a victor concerning it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Your children will give you rest. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let your borders be called salvation. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let things work for you in the name of Jesus. Some people get to places and they begin to pray for breakthrough. I pray concerning you. You will not need to break anything. You will walk through in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will make it through without any trouble in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It shall be well with you in Jesus' name. By the time we gather together again, this time next year, your mouth will be filled with testimonies. The results of these prayers, you will see it in the name of Jesus. You will testify concerning it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will have testimonials in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will have evidence of the goodness of the Lord in the name of Jesus. People will come to you and say, take me to your God who is doing this good concerning you in the name of Jesus Christ. It shall be well with you in Jesus' name. In your going out and in your coming in, you will do good. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Money will not be far away from you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will take money out of money in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. You will know what to do in the name of Jesus. You will not be stranded in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not be stranded in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will know where to go in the name of Jesus. You will know what to say in the name of Jesus. You will know when to talk in the name of Jesus. You will know when to keep quiet in the name of Jesus. You will know when to embrace in the name of Jesus. You will know when to push away in the name of Jesus Christ. You will know what to do. You will not commit errors in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will not stray out of the way in the name of Jesus Christ. Till Jesus comes, you will continue to serve the Lord. You are serving the Lord now that's where you are here. You will make heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. And when we we'll get to heaven, you will be my neighbor in the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. For we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let us just stretch forth our hands to our pastor and just begin to pray for him. Let us pray that indeed he will receive the mercy of God. That the, mercy, the sure mercies of David will be evident in his life and in his family's lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, the Lord will see him and indeed call him good and faithful servant. Just as God sees David. And